Suppose that 78,000, and this is kind of pale, let me write it larger. $78,000, I'll take it. Suppose that $78,000 is invested at 6.5% interest, 6.5% interest, compounded quarterly. That's for, uh, there are four quarters in a year, so compounded four times a year. Now compounded means they're going to take this 78,000, stick it in the bank, and during the first quarter, their uh, 78,000 will be multiplied by 6.5%, and that interest will be added back, so you'll have 78,000 plus more on top of it. Then you'll get to the second quarter, and that new amount gets multiplied by 6.5. Uh, that'll be the interest, uh, not by 6.5, but by 6.5%. And that new amount will get uh, put back into the account. And so the money keeps being put back into the account um, rather than uh, uh, being taken out by you. And so the money continues to grow. That's called compounding. And find the function for the amount to which the investment grows after T years. Well, we're going to do that first. There is a formula you need to memorize. A. I'll tell you what all the letters mean in a minute. A equals P parentheses 1 plus are over in to the n t power. Where A is called the accumulated amount of money. Accumulated amount of money. after so many years, after time. That's what A is. P is the original amount of money. called the principle. I think it's AL. Um, R is the interest rate written as a decimal. And N is very important. That's the number of compounding periods per year. Okay, 
So, you also need to know this, that if you have one compounding period per year, that's called annual. If N is two, that's semi-annual. If N is four, that's quarterly. If N is I was going to say six, but that's like half yearly. No, let us um, um, 12. If N is 12, that's monthly. And if N is 365, that's daily. OK, so here. We've got compounded quarterly. So N is going to equal four. So now we have to change 6.5% to a decimal. You take 6.5. And divide it by 100. That gives you. 0 0.065. And 78,000 is 78,000. So, A equals P parentheses 1 plus R over N to the NT is going to be 78,000 parentheses 1 plus 0 0.065 over 4 parentheses closed to the 4 T. Because that's what they want first. Um, um, what they want first, A, find the function for the amount to which the investment grows after T years. And then we're going to find out what that is for T equals 0, 2, 5, and 10. T equals 0, 2, 5, and 10. Okay, we're going to work some magic on the calculator because what they're asking is this, T equals 0, That'll be 78,000 times 1 plus 0 0.065 over 4 to the 4 times 0. Dot 4.0, 4, 4 times 0. Um, T equals 2 will be 78,000 times 1 plus 0 0.065 over 4 to the 4 times 2. T equals 5, so on and so forth, right? 78,000 times 1 plus 0 0.065 over 4 to the 4 times 5, and finally t equals 10, we'll have 78,000 times 1 plus 0 0.065 over 4 to the 4 times 10. And you can go ahead and work these out. I mean, four would four times zero is zero. Four times two is eight. Four times five is twenty. Four times ten is forty. But whatever, 
we are going to pull out our trusty calculator. And the most important thing will be to put it in correctly the first time. OK, so 78,000. Parentheses 1 plus 0 0.065 divided by 4. Parentheses. Carrot. Four times zero. So here's what I wrote. Let me double check it. Seven eight thousand seventy eight thousand parentheses one plus point zero six five over four parentheses closed. Carrot four point zero four no. See, I said 4.0. No, no, no. See how easy it is to go in and change it? That's times zero. Now it's right. Let's hit enter. 78,000. That's just what it should be. We just said, how much will there be for zero years? Okay, now, in order to make the fewest mistakes possible, um, if I've got this right, then all I have to do is hit second, enter. And I've got my function back, see? I've got my 78,000 times 1 plus 0 0.065 over 4 raised to the 4 times 0 power, but now I want it to be 4 times 2. So I backtrack once so that the cursor is blinking over the 0, and I hit 2. And then I hit Enter. And I have eight, eight, seven, three, five, point, eight, four. At which point, well, I happen to know, I happen to know, that most of the time for these, you're asked to round to two decimal places because that's where we round money to. but do what it tells you in the instructions. The instructions that are right under the answer box. Okay, now I'm going to second enter again. And all I have to do is back up. And now they're looking for T equals five. So times five. Everything else stays the same. Every time I rewrite something, I'm in danger of making a mistake, a little mistake. Now, ooh, look at that. 107672.74. The, the third decimal place is a two, so it's not gonna cause the four to round up the same as in the one before there was a one after the four, so that wouldn't cause the four to round up. And now we're gonna jump to 10 years. So second, enter. 10, one, zero. Enter. equals one, four, eight, six, three, three, point fifty-eight. 
So here you have the money in the account after zero years, after two years, after five years, after 10 years. So let's look at the most important part. which is getting your initial formula for the problem you're doing correct. So the initial amount of money goes in front. Then you type parentheses one plus. Then the interest rate written as a decimal. Then the number of compounding periods per year close your parentheses, and then raise to this power. Okay. If you have the older operating system, I believe you would type 78,000 parentheses, one plus point zero six five divided by four, parentheses closed, caret parentheses four times, let's say two, if you were doing that one. And then what you would do would be to back up going second, enter, You would get this line back, you would backtrack to over the two, and you would change it to a five. Then you would backtrack to over the five and change it to a 10. So it's almost exactly what the later operating system does. So no pressure, no stress. I could even see really that could be easier to deal with. You just have to be sure to close that parenthesis right there. Okay. So all the problems will be like this, using this formula. So a lot of them are like this. They give you this little table the principal, the interest rate, and the time in years you're going to have it in the bank. And for all of these, the interest is going to be compounded semi-annually. So, N is going to be 2. Oh, it's just asking you about that one problem. Okay, so you're going to have A equals 1,000, parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.04 over 2 to the 2 times 3. Okay, the 1,000 comes from here, the principal. The interest rate is 4%, so you take 4 over 100, and that gives you 0 0.04. Compounded semi-annually is N equals 2. So you're going to have 0 0.04 over 2. Close your parentheses. And then when you raise to the power, this is N, this is T, it tells you the time in years. So this is what you're gonna do. And you're gonna get your calculator. You're gonna clear all the other stuff. And you're going to type one thousand parentheses, one plus point zero four over two, close parentheses, K 
caret two times three. And if you want to, you could even say six. We won't tell. And there's your money. And you're going to round to two decimal places. So you'll have 1,000. At the end of three years, you'll have $1,126.16. Not a lot to say for your money, is it? It's kind of depressing. But it does grow over years, especially if you don't think about it. One, one, two, six point sixteen. And that was that. See, these are really quick to do and fairly mindless. Until you get to Melissa, Melissa's going to be on the final. As you'll discover if you look at the practice final. On Melissa's sixth birthday, On Melissa's sixth birthday, she gets a $2,000 CD that earns 4% interest, compounded semi-annually. If the CD matures on her 13th birthday, how much money will be available? The most common mistake is to say T equals 13. But it doesn't. She doesn't get it till she's six years old. So it'll be in the bank from her sixth birthday to her 13th birthday. So T is going to equal 13 minus six, which is seven. So A equals P parentheses, one plus R over N raised to the N T power. That'll be $2,000 parentheses, one plus 0 0.04, Uh, again, they're telling us semi-annually, so that's two. Raised to the two times seven. So that's 14. So calculator, it's your turn. 2,000. Parentheses. One plus. 0 0.04 divided by 2. Raised to the 2 times 7 or 14. 14th power. Melissa will be a rich young lady. For a 13 year old. Okay, so she's going to get two, six, three, eight, two thousand six hundred thirty eight dollars. Ooh, nine, five, seven. That seven will cause the five to move up to a six and ninety six cents. And if the person who gave her the CD is really nice, he or she will give her four cents on her 13th birthday. It's cruel, isn't it? Okay. Anyway, that would be the answer that you would give. That's how much money is available. She could always choose to leave it in the bank as a college fund. 
we can even look and see, okay, by the time she's 18, how much money will she have? More than that, probably not enough for a college fund. Now here is another exponential function. And this one's a little different because it's not talking about compounding. It says the demand for lumber is increasing exponentially. Here's what that means. It means the demand is growing, 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 and taking off and going through the roof. The demand for lumber is growing exponentially. This is growing exponentially slowly in the beginning and then <laughs> the amount of timber in in billion cubic feet consumed t years after 1997 can be approximated by this they're giving you a formula here N of T equals 68 parentheses 1.018 to the T power. Where T equals zero corresponds to 1997. And I forgot to, to put in the second uh, uh, question, which was, um, how much timber can they expect to sell in the year 2020, uh, 20, 2004? What will it be in 2004? Okay, now that's to give you practice on this. Since T is years after 1997, okay? So for instance, 1998 would be year one. And 1999 would be year two. And so on and so forth, 2000 would be year three, 2001, what the heck? Might as well do it this way. Would be year four, 2002, would be year five, 2003, would be year six, and 2004, would be year seven. So you take your trusty calculator and you say 68, times 1 plus 0, 18, 1.018 raised to the seventh power. That would be n of 7, by the way. So we can do that with a calculator. We'll have 68 parentheses, 1.018, parentheses closed, caret, 7, so we'll have, and I think that ju this just says to round to the nearest whole number, so we could expect to have 77 billion cubic feet of timber consumed bring the trees back incidentally cubic feet is written ft Cubed. That's probably the way it would be in the answer. Maybe. Maybe.
Maybe it would say cubic feet. How do you feel about that? Pretty good. Pretty good. Good. Pretty good. Pretty good. It seems like seems it's, like it's um, a pretty, pretty straightforward, straightforward formula. formula. It is, but you have to memorize it. Or at least be very, very familiar with it. And then the last week. Yeah, week after next. You're going to learn maybe even before then. Nah, week after next, you're going to learn a, a new formula. For compounding every second of every day of every week of every month of every year. And that's called continuous compounding. It's a theoretical upper limit that you can apply to all of your, your uh, savings accounts or, or any interest bearing account. It's, an, it's a theoretical upper limit. So you can figure out which is the best deal when you're going from bank to bank looking for um, um, accounts to open. It's very handy. That's all I have to show you today. So, if you have any questions, we can go back over anything I talked about today or talk about anything else. But let me save this document and let me stop recording. So, Professor, I'll so take professor, a look, I'll take at, a look the at the pre-exam. Pre -exam. But is it comprehensive? But is it comprehensive? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good, more questions. Okay. Could you show Could you that, show that um, <clears throat> the explanations for the